Hi, I'm Bruce Reidenauer with Reidenauer Auto Group Horse Trailer Sales, and today I've got a very special opportunity to go through the new River Valley Trailer Manufacturing Facility with Steve Yon, the owner of iMac LLC. He's going to take us through the manufacturing facility, show us how these trailers are made, and talk through some of the enhancements that have been made from the old Eclipse aluminum trailers. In April of 2015, we were fortunate enough to work out an agreement with the Federal Bankruptcy Court to start producing the Eclipse trailer line. Once all the bank agreement and the bankruptcy has been settled, then we will purchase the assets of Eclipse aluminum trailers. We're going to start producing the trailers, full line like we are now, but we're going to change the name to River Valley Trailer Company. Um, since April of 2015, we have moved to Malta, Ohio. We were able to double our production size, which gave us better efficiency flow, made our quality a little better because we could get a handle and a grip on it. We build things in separate departments, and then they are transported to the assembly line and put together. That way, everybody's responsible for what they make. At the end of the day, if we have an issue, we know who to go to, we know who's responsible. Uh, in the last three or four months, we've produced 60 trailers. Uh, we've been able to include 20 new enhancements in the trailers, which we'll review as we go through the process. But the key thing is we were able to hire some of the old employees that were, had a lot of experience with building aluminum trailers. So we brought them on board, we've taken their knowledge, we've taken our knowledge of the process flow, the manufacturing side of it, and created a pretty good team. I think we're going to build a very quality trailer, keep our lead times down to a minimum, and make everybody happy. And Steve, you told me that you, know, you have a working mission. Tell me what that is. That is to build a quality aluminum trailer at an affordable price. Everybody gets a good trailer and is happy with their trailer. That's that, our goal. That's what we want out of life. Excellent. Steve, we're at the very beginning of the manufacturing process and I see this jig behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing with this jig? Yes, we did change things a little bit. We buy our steel pre-cut because we can hold our tolerances better. And we do have jigs in place to where we build the A-frames and marry it to the side rails of the frame. That way we can keep everything square, uh, nice and straight, the repeatability in a process like this is very crucial. Well, so you have consistency from trailer to trailer. So, if I understand correctly, one of the benefits of having a jig is that you have the same structural weld every single time and you get much better consistency there. Is that true? Yes, we do, and we can control the weld. You want to make sure you get enough weld, but you don't want too much weld so that we take the metal to the other side of the stress point the proper length so that we get the proper amount of strength out of our frames. Steve, I see we've got a welded up frame here um, and I see our mylar barrier here. Can you tell us a little bit about number one, how you prepare this frame and then number two, what this is all about? Yes, uh, once the frame is welded up or galvanized, it's a hot dip process which is uh, a very good barrier for moisture or ding dent protection. And then we add this attached, and then we encase the frame with aluminum to start our build. At this point, we put the axles on. We got different jigs made so that we know exactly where the holes go for the axle placement. We have pre-punched holes in the frame for our huck bolts when we start to attach. We have pre-punched holes for our wiring, for our brakes. The wiring is totally enclosed in the frame, no loose wiring hanging below. Huge benefit there. Steve, um, I noticed the welds are galvanized on this frame. This frame is hot dip galvanized after it's welded together, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And the mylar barrier prevents a galvanic reaction or any possibility of a galvanic reaction between the steel part and then the aluminum that's on yes, top it of does. it. Yes, it does. Awesome. Um, one thing you'll notice, we do have to blow holes and if a tube is completely enclosed, we have to leave a hole in there for the galvanizing to get all the way through to penetrate that frame. These frames are not only galvanized on the outside, but the inside as well. So that's very, very strong corrosion resistance. Very, there. very strong. Excellent. Very strong. Steve, I see we've got a trailer here that's in the process of being decked up. We've got the axles on. Uh, we're using a rumber floor on this particular unit. Can you take a minute and tell me a little bit about what the benefits are of the rumber floor? Yeah, the rumber flooring offers a 20-year guarantee versus our standard 2x6, 2x8 floor. Uh, the supports underneath the flooring are closer together to support the rumber. 
uh, makes it very efficient when the owner wants to wash it down after every activity or once a year when they put it away for the winter. But the life expectancy just enhances the trailer a lot. Yeah, you know, uh, I use this rubber floor on my demo trailers and uh, we'll use a trailer for six months and you can't even tell a horse has been in it once you hose it out. I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. You can also see that we started encasing the frame. This is just like an erector set. This is our, our ground piece and then we will put the panels in place. Uh, there's one more thing I would like to speak to up here. When we weld our couplers to the frame, we do distort the galvanizing. Uh -huh. uh, we have switched to a CRC, same thing that the government requires on the bridge embankments and the road mm -hmm. construction. So that's the best quality galvanizing you can buy besides hot dip. They're done with the CRC process, right? Everything from the nose forward will be re-galvanized. Excellent. And that gives us a 15-year guarantee on that. Okay. We're now seeing the trailer being boxed in. And I wonder if you can tell me a little bit about what Scooter's doing back here. Yes, Scooter is doing tack welding in place to hold the trailer together. Um, as you notice, we start the assembly on jack stands. That way, whenever we walk up, you can lay it level on any side. It's going to be level, it's going to be square. It's a quality check that we do on every trailer. As we progress forward, everything is squared and level. Um, once we get everything in place, we have jigs that measure the distance here, so we keep a nice straight line profile. They will be tack welded on the inside. Later in the next process, it'll be a complete weld, a finished weld. Um, part of the electrical wiring is included in this step as we move forward so that um, we're not trying to run wires in places that we can't get to. And I notice even though this is merely tack welded in place, you know how sturdy the wall construction is right now. It, I mean, it gets, we don't have a roof in place or anything, but... You could drive this trailer pretty... down the road without a roof. Uh -huh. If you wanted to buy this trailer without a roof, it would be totally safe. So that's going to be our be next market self... segment is convertible trailers? Oh, I don't know if we're going there. <laughs> Maybe a moon roof, but not a complete convertible. And as you can see, with the holes being punched, we're able to run the wiring for the brakes. Everything's contained up out of the way, nothing, no road debris is going to get a hold of the wires, pull them loose. As we move across the trailer, you can see the interior door jam. This door jam is built in a jig, so we make, make sure it's square. Everyone's the exact same size. So when we get to this step, it falls in our tray, fits in the groove. He tacks them in place once he checks it for squareness. And then when we move to actually align the door, put the door in, that door is built in a jig as well so that everything has a perfect fit and we're able to keep the same symmetrical, um, nice and clean and sharp that way. Well, so you have a repeatable door here that seals better, it lays in the frame better, and it's no longer a hand-built unique door every time you go onto each trailer. Say you were in an accident and you need to replace that door. Whether we do it or a body shop does it, you're going to get the exact same door that you started with. That's so that the repairs are easier, more functional. That's a huge change. And Steve, one thing I noticed back here is, you know, the tails on these wires are long enough so that you can get to them, but they're short enough so they're not going to flop into the wheel or the brake anymore. And that used to be an issue we had. And, and that's a good point. If you notice, these are gel filled. And they're gel, I did notice that. <laughs> that they do have gel in them so that they don't corrode. It doesn't make the wire brittle. The longevity of it is just 100 times longer. And as we move forward, we have changed to LED lighting. We'll, talk, we'll touch base with that later. But we have enhanced the trailer with all LED lighting at this time. So Steve, I know this is one of our Congress trailers. I'm really excited. We're gonna have a nice scarlet and gray trailer for all of our Ohio State fans. Um, I noticed that there's plastic covering the color code here. Why is that? The plastic is on the aluminum when we receive it so that there's no scratches, no dings in it. It's a protective liner that also lets us weld and not have any burns on the aluminum itself. So then you, re at, the, at the end of the production process, before the final wash, you remove this? No, even that, this stays on for the final wash. Really? Wash. If we take the, the plastic off, sometimes it'll change or discolor a little bit. So before this is done, this will be re-taped. 
uh -huh. and then the uh, aluminum brightenizer will be added to it and then a total rinse will be in place. As you can tell at this point, we've added the roof. The roof has been built in a separate department. The roof's been brought over, um, dropped in place, make sure that the whole box is square. Um, on the inside, we have strapping holding the box together as we put the roof on and it'll stay in place until the complete weld is done. Uh, we try not to do too many welds on the outside. We prefer the majority of the welding to be on the inside just to enhance the Cleaner appearance nice of the trailer. trailer. And as you notice, as we move forward, more electrical components are added as we go. Steve, I noticed something different on the hinges here. Um, and I know this has been an area of concern in the past. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing. Steel rod inside of this aluminum. Mm -hmm. so that the aluminum and the stainless wouldn't corrode, wouldn't create the friction. We also weld the top and the bottom. So the only thing that actually pivot is the one hinge in the middle. Before, they always let that whole rod turn. So it was galling in there. It was galling in there. And we did add the grease insert. We're using the white molly grease on every one that we apply. And at 66 trailers, we haven't had the first complaint since. Yeah, huge improvement. Two, if there's any need to replace this door, we have a jig so that every hinge, every hole is in the same place on every trailer. So if you back into that door or you leave that door open and you rip it off, you can contact you. We can get them a new door. We can get them the hinge set. All they got to do is drill them out, either bolt them or re-rivet re the existing hinge, and you're up and going. So we no longer have a situation where each one of these doors is unique and that the hinges were kind of in a different spot on every door. Correct. And I noticed that your gap is very even all the way around here and you're using some little shims to maintain a gap as you're hanging that door. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is, you know, that door is nice and flush, it's not warped. It's it seemed like Correct. we had some issues in the past with the doors, you know, not quite being flush in them. Another there. process change that we made um, the door is tack welded on the inside in the department behind here. It is placed in. Once we shim it, the hinges are made. Then we do the final welds on the outside. That way, if we need to tweak that door a little bit to get that perfect fit we're looking for, it's very easily done at this point. Excellent. Um, the doors are sealing better. Um, we're not getting the water or the moisture inside like with the previous trailers. That's been a big improvement. We've had several vendors in to look at different things that we want to change. And I've had two vendors approach us that want to know if we will build doors for them to sell on the open market. <laughs> so it's got to be a big improvement to so get So you got to go in your like way. That. Yes. So Steve, I see we've got um, aluminum wheels on this trailer that look very, very nice. Talk to me a little bit about what you're doing here. We did an upgrade to all aluminum wheels because we every had- Every trailer? Every trailer, even the spare has aluminum wheel exactly like that. We had so many issues to where the steel rim was rusting, the hub cap wouldn't stay on, the center cap had lost its grip, the lug nuts weren't staying in place. So we actually upgraded to a better radius tire uh -huh. and we did the black inlay uh -huh. with the wheels to match our black graphics. Looks awesome. Kind of ties them together. And while we're here, another enhancement we did, we stepped the support there and now we have two bolts here four bolts underneath and two bolts here so that you can back in, damage that fender and it's not gonna fall off. Driving down the road, it's not gonna blow off. Uh, another enhancement we made to the fender, as you recall, there used to be a light here. When you tie your horse up here, when he finds something to mess with, he uh -huh. is gonna chew and nibble. So we added a rear light here and, and a light on light. the front of the fender. So and that Steve, we stay can in you compliance. Stand? Steve, can you stand on this stuff? You can stand on that. We also have an option to where we extend that all the way around for a running board if you like. So vertically challenged people like me can reach the drop down windows. It makes it a lot easier <laughs> for everybody. We also, as a standard feature, we added this, the handle to make it easy access to get in and out of the trailer. A lot of times with the four wheel drive trucks or so high, this first step is pretty high. Stinker. So we added the, the handle to help with that. And I noticed you've got a little bit nicer latch on the door than you used to have. Yes, we did. We doubled the size, the diameter of this because we had a lot of issues to where it would be latched open and a wind would jerk it and would distort this and then they couldn't get it to work. So we have redesigned this. We've changed the spring. 
it's just a lot tougher, more durable for the everyday usage. When you're when you're in the field. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, went too far. Now your door stays in place, and you don't have to worry about the wind. Um, out of all the research we did, especially social media, there was a lot of issues with cracking in the corners of the nose. So with the instruction and support of a structural engineer, we added gussets in the corner, top and bottom. Everywhere there's a corner that we meet a surface. Um, we've also changed the approach in the way we weld. Uh, we talked with welding engineers. We discovered that when you start a weld on aluminum, you're about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you reach 220, 215 in temperature of the metal that you're welding, once you go over that temperature, then you start to damage or weaken the aluminum. So we've done, we did a little more research and have changed the structure in the way we weld. The welds are cleaner looking, they're stronger, we're not taking the tensile strength out of the material as we weld, and the support has been a lot better. Um, as you notice on the door, we're going with three hinges on the back side. Um, when the door swings around and latches, we've added two support pins. There used to be only one. Uh, another change we have made, we have changed our saddle pans. We have also added a piece of stainless steel back here versus the aluminum. With the weight of the saddle traveling down the road, there was a lot of these that created an issue, would rip and fall off. A lot better improvement. Um, we have added the spare tire. The spare tire sits, and that spare tire is an, an option as far as the location. It can be in the trailer, it can be outside the trailer. We do make a nice carrying uh, frame for it to be on the outside. Our doors are solid doors. They're not you know, they're not a, a partition door. They're made in our panel shop over there. Very sturdy door. Here are the pins. You also have the flexibility to latch all the doors together and create a utility trailer. If you wanted to haul a mower, if you wanted to put your four-wheeler in here, if you need to move one of your siblings, a lot of different things can take place in this trailer. It's not just a horse trailer. It's more of a all around utility trailer. So, and as you notice, on some of the doors, we have the aluminum panels. On the other doors, we have what's called a kick resistant plate. Um, this, we have the aluminum on the outside. We've got our filler in the middle. We have a heavier aluminum plate, and then with our rumber board on the outside, which makes it very, very sturdy so that the horse. If they stumble, if they kick it, um, sometimes you don't know what makes a horse get excited and they rear up, the trailer's protected. Well, and you can hit that thing with a hammer and it won't ding it. Right. We, uh, we have changed our class, our uh, rattle collectors as they're called. We have changed those, went with a different style. It was one of our other enhancements. And as you look through the ceiling, you can also see the vent locations. Uh, this is a slant. So we have them placed so that they're right above the horse's neck, shoulder area. And so those are bi-directional vents still, right? So yes, in the summertime, they vent air, and in the wintertime, you can open them to back to, the, to exhaust air. Yes. So Steve, I see we've got a beautiful new logo here. Why don't you tell me about it real quick? This is our new logo that we developed. It is River Valley Aluminum Trailers. We also can be found at rivervalleyaluminumtrailers.com, rivervalleytrailercompany.com, rivervalleyhorsetrailer.com, rivervalleycargotrailers.com, rivervalleyparts.com. We will have a separate parts department, so if you need enhancements, replacement items, you'll have one location to go to. We'll be able to service all your needs. Well, thank you very much for showing us everything today, Steve. It's been a real treat. I'll see you at the Quarter Horse Congress. Yeah, buddy. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'm Bruce Ridenauer at Ridenauer Auto Group Horse Trailer Sales. You can find us on the web at www.eclipseofohio.com. Find us on Facebook at Ride Now or Auto Group Horse Trailer Sales or call us anytime at 740-342-5146.